What's up, everyone? It's the Casual Caster here. I'm out uh, 6 a.m., a few minutes shy of 6 a.m., actually, uh, up here in the Northern California, Sacramento area, uh, specifically Rancho Marietta, uh, and we're about to do some bass fishing. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get on the fish and uh, improve on our catch the other day. All right, let's hit the water. Well, first cast, spot three, here we go. A little dink, but at least we didn't skunk. All right, fish number one for the day. Spot number three, first cast. Cinco, black and salmon. A little dink. Bye, bud. And he's gone. There he goes off that way. All right. Fish number one. Don't get caught up in those. Get out of the sticks. Okay, maybe not a super nice one, but it's a fish. Fish number two. Let's get you off that hook, bud. I know. I know you don't want to be in there. Let's get you out of here. Let's get a picture. And I'll get you on your way. Oh, you ate my worm. Or it's gone. That's okay. I went for a good cause. Alright, fish number two. And it's about the same size, another dink. But right now it's just about the fight and finding them. Alright, buddy. Thank you so much. That's off the uh, Senko. And he's gone. Uh, I gotta stop uh, turning the camera off and, and on. I, I thought that camera was on, and I turned it on for the for the retrieval there, but not for the catch. So we'll turn this on for the next one. That's a nice one. That's right, come on up. Come on up. Woo! I watched you take that, bud. That's got to be a three, four pounder. Let's see. All right, thank you, Mr. Bass. Again, that big, big bait bites or whatever that is, is doing the trick. Oh man, you swallowed that, huh? I get my pliers out somewhere. Did I not bring my pliers?
that's uh, three pounds seven ounces all right Fish on. Get up here. All right. On the spider on the spider Woo! did not think I'd get that guy on the spider I wish I had that uh, and not just the reaction film hold on buddy let me get you free let me get you free oh yeah top water hit with the frog baby lunker hut frog lunker hunt I don't know why I can't say that Lunker hunt. Yes, sir. Okay, come on. It's a good hook right there. Barely held on. As a matter of fact, I think you already spit that, didn't you? No, there it is. Okay. All right. That is our fish right there. It's not that big a one probably only about a pound and a half I don't know maybe pushing two but there you go on that lunker hunt black widow spider baby thank you see if you have any more friends goodbye all right well we got one with the spider we will definitely keep fishing that because that was fun but for right now We'll go ahead and see if we can't get one with this bubblegum purple, uh, purple, I mean pink, uh, worm. <clears throat> All right, so this is that uh, bubblegum pink Senko worm. Let's see if we can't get a taker. Ooh, that spider bite was fun, guys. I wish I had that strike on camera. We're going to throw it again. We'll get another strike on camera. Don't worry. I'm just trying to knock off as many of these as I can from the rush tackle box as fast as I can so that I can have more fun with the spider. <clears throat> but honestly, I mean, I know that's the right, right kind of spider for my area. We got black widows all over the place. I did not expect that spider to hit as fast as it hit. I've been throwing frogs out here for the last month and I honestly haven't got a frog hit. But I throw a spider, my first cast in this area, but sixth cast overall. Nice old strike, so I like it. Look at that pink jumping through the water there, huh? Kind of cool. All right. Let's see. Let's put it out. There we go. A little bit better in the shade of the tree there. Should be a nice magic spot. Hopefully we don't get too bothered by the, uh, the weeds in front of us on the retrieval.
So, I mean, that's really the purpose of these subscription services, guys. The fuck? Got it, fish on. Got you, bud. I told you, man, that spider. I told you. Woo! Come on, stop biting. Stop biting. Let's get you up so we can take a look at you. Come on. Come on. Woo! didn't skunk here boys and that's another one with the spider man you were a crazy guy will you just calm down you're getting yourself all tangled up huh and you wear yourself out yet huh come on bud all right let's get that you swallowed that thing, huh? Hold on, bud. I'm gonna go get my pliers. Alright, spot number, I don't know, four or five. This is some deeper water here. Yeah, put put it out a little bit to the right, Dad. There you go. So that'll happen sometimes. That's good. that's called that bird's nest. So you want to do is pull it out, pull all the line out until it stops. So and then you want to. Hold it above, reel it back in, so that you don't reel it back in a snag. So hold the line, pinch it with your fingers, then reel it. Yeah. So, oh, oh, let me see it. Hold on. It's very, uh, they're semi easy to take care of once you know how to troubleshoot them. So that's what you just call the bird's nest. I'm surprised it took you that long to do one. So sometimes you got to pull out 40 yards. It's not, and it's, yeah. and it's no problem. It's, it. it's actually not a problem at all to do that. So you, I can see where, where it is there. So you see how right now it won't yeah. pull anymore. So sometimes you give it a little bit of a tug like that, and it'll keep going. And sometimes it won't, in which case you got to find what strings wrapped around it and pull it off mm -hmm. and then pull it again and it'll come loose. Mm. Remember, it can't actually be tied. So see that? 
Mm -hmm. See right there, there's mm -hmm. strings that are pulled around it. Mm -hmm. So you gotta take those strings, pull it like that, and now it's okay. So, it back in. and it, but you, when you reel it back in, you, like that. you can reel it back in fast. So even though you pull out a lot of line, it's not a hassle, right? So then you just gotta chuck. Casting too hard, probably. Uh, a little bit there, but um, you make sure you're grabbing the bottom of the pole. I just noticed you didn't do that. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have your hand on the bottom of the pole too. So down here. So. Yeah. Down here and here, you're using this to create the whip. But don't I need to be holding on to the, the line too when I get Yeah, so like this. Right. Okay. See what I just did there? And that, that got yeah. up further than further than anything you really did, right? Yeah. And I didn't give it any momentum. Huh. Okay, but so. I thought normally when I, I let go of that, the line starts going down though. Yeah, you don't let go of it until... So you let go of it, but you hold it with your thumb. Oh, you hold it what? The spool. You hold oh. the spool with your thumb. So you never. So you can let you can push down and hold the spool at the same time. Is that what you're doing? So you push down, let go, and hold the spool. Push down, let go, then hold. So the spool? I, I, I. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what you do. Yep. So yeah, you don't want to try to to push that as you're casting. You want to hold that it. here and yeah. then give it the whip, right? Okay. So. See, very gentle, and you're still able to get it out there. But yeah, don't don't be afraid to for those birds' nests. Just the, the the worst thing you can do when you get that bird's nest is once you get the snag, and you can't pull it out, don't rip, because yeah. uh, that'll that'll create a, almost a knot to the point where you gotta cut it out. That's what Robin did to my poles the other day, or the other week to two of them. Oh, like, Dad, look at this one right here. Oh, my God. This is like a six-pounder. Huge. Take it. Take it, dude. This is this one's huge right here, Dad. Yeah. It just went deeper, though. It, but he was right here. He's probably going to come right back. He was huge. Wow, that guy was big. I could have scared him off a little bit too. Being so loud. <clears throat> Professional anglers say that fish can hear your footsteps. They feel your vibrations. Yeah, but that big one you might see like in front of you in a minute because he's probably panning the shoreline. Oh. Yeah, you did. It was probably that big guy. You didn't set the hook, Dad. You can't just reel it in. You can't just reel it in. Dad, that was probably that big guy I just saw a second ago. If you would have just caught that fish and it was that big guy, I would have been very jealous. Did you need to reset your worm? It looked like your worm was wrapped up. Okay, no, you're good. So see, that guy, he came up to shore and then went right back to the depth. Just like I was saying. That big one so that um so you start it out deeper and just drag it back in a little bit i cannot believe the size of that fish <clears throat> so that the downside to that dad is when you get a bad hook set like that you still poke that fish so that fish is probably gone you know what I mean he just had a bad experience 
It could have been a worse experience for him, but he just had a bad experience. That doesn't mean don't try to catch him again, though. I guess it's some dumb fish, too, you know? But yep, again, you don't, I mean, if you put it further in the, in the worm, like, like, then, then just the tiny tip, uh, you're going to have to set the hook even harder. Because you got to force the, you know, the hook back out. But yeah, it, it, the bass fishing is when you need that big hook set, Dad. So that's when you, when you commit, when you take that slack off that line, that's when you go ahead and give yourself the big old rip, you know, hook set. From your hip to your shoulder, you know. I might need to change my soft plastic up. So what you do here, Dad, get your, keep the tension and look at me, keep and pull this way. Yep. Give it a big pull like that. Yeah. It almost always comes free that way. Yeah. The other thing you do too, is you, is you keep the tension and do this. You hit the pole here, but it, it creates a different type of shock. Yeah, then make sure your hook's not poking out. Yeah, sometimes uh, the worm gets tired, so to speak, and you gotta puncture it in a different place. Cause it's been, it's been, so many holes been poked in it. Um, here, uh, come back over here. Take the switch puzzle here real quick. So if you were to fish that, it's the exact same presentation. So if you want to feel the difference between a $30 reel, oh actually that's not that's that's a $40 reel. That's not even a nice one. Never mind. Uh, on, on my back are my nice ones. But for for like a worm, you don't need a fast retrieving reel. But you can imagine for some of the top water baits, you need a, a faster speed reel. So the, here, here's what you do: you take your hook, you go into your worm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when you've already punctured it shallow, you go a little deeper, okay, and then bring it out here, and you pull it all the way up top, and that, that just came through your old hole, whoops, all the way up top. Okay, so sometimes, in this case, you got to just go ahead and break off that top a little bit. And you can imagine now, the hooks down here is going to be in a different place too. So again, you go about quarter to half inch through to create your collar there. Yep. And you pull it up around the knot. That way the hook sits right on the worm and not on the knot. Mm -hmm. And here, what you need to do, because you want it to sit straight and not have a bend, so you kind of size it up and pinch it right on the hook and give it a little more, so lift up a little more, put a little more slack on so that you can go ahead pull it through and put that guy back in and see how now it's nice and straight yeah